to challenge her, so she asks if he knows how to play. Seika says he is just a beginner, so the princess gives him a handicap, leaving only her pawns. Seika thinks it will be one-sided, but the princess offers him a wager, saying that the winner can request the loser to do anything. Seika is hesitant, so she tells him if the request is too much, he can refuse. Seika agrees, and they start playing. As they play, the princess asks him what he thinks the strongest piece is, and he says that they themselves are the strongest, because they don't fight directly, and they control all the other pieces from the shadows. The princess says that most people would call the king or the dragon knights the strongest, but she thinks that strongest piece are those not on the board. Besides the king and soldiers, there are the masses of people living in the country. She never had the king or knights on her side, so she gained the support of the masses instead, and is confident she will win. Seika wonders if that is what she saw with her future sight, and she is surprised he knows about it. Seika resigns from their match, and the princess wants to gain his support. So he asks her about her true intentions. She says she wants to save people, describing a large hole that children are playing next to. They don't notice it, so they will eventually fall in. So she wants to save them, but she can't give any specific details, worrying that it could change the future. Hearing this, Seika agrees to help her how he can. It's time to head back to the capital, and Luth sees them off. Mabel wishes she could stay longer, because she just got to relax, but Seika reminds her she needs to get back to her studies. They head off, and Seika rides with Gly and the princess, because it's the most stable carriage. Gly is surprised Seika has such a weakness, and Seika watches over their caravan. There is suddenly an explosion, but only a decoy carriage was destroyed. Seika goes outside, and sees that they are being attacked by bandits. The bandit leader orders his men to search the carriages, and to fire their bows at Seika. But Seika prepares for their attack, creating a magnetic cloud that blocks all the arrows. The bandits try attacking using magic, but Seika easily blocks it with his barrier. Gly and his men start fighting back, and the princess requests that the bandits be taken alive, so Seika uses his vines, which instantly restrains all the bandits. Seika meets up with the gang, and they wonder why the bandits tried to attack when they had an army, and what they are going to do with them. Seika gets called by the princess, who thanks him for his help. He asks if she knows who is after her, but she has too many enemies to know who it was. Seika wonders what she will be doing with the bandits, but she already predicted this, so she already prepared a bunch of spare carriages to take them back to the capital for interrogation. Seika thinks it could be dangerous if they got loose, but the princess says the bandits will behave because they are waiting for their reinforcements. Seika thinks that makes them even more dangerous, but she says their reinforcements won't be coming, so there is no need to worry. They get back to the capital, and they part ways. The princess thanks them for their company, and she reminds Seika that she will always be on his side. We see the other group of bandits, but it seems they came across the group of demons, and were completely destroyed. They continue towards the capital, determined to succeed in their mission of killing the hero. Seika gets asked by the principal to give a welcome speech to the new students, saying it's usually an honor to be chosen, although she knows he doesn't care about it. Seika accepts the request, and Yuki wonders if it's really okay, because it will make him stand out. But Seika says it's not a big deal, and he wonders if he has been playing things too safe after the way he died in his previous life. Although he doesn't regret becoming friends with the girls, he thinks it would be okay even if he stood out. Yuki wonders if he will be facing the coming threat, but Seika tells her it will be easy for him, and no one will even know it was him. We see the group of demons outside the city. The leader Zor notes that there are no Imperial Guards or high-level adventurers to be worried about, although he senses something that makes him uneasy. He explains the plan to the others, saying they will split up and drive all the students toward the center building, at which point they will slaughter everyone and cause chaos until the hero appears. Zor assures them they will succeed and all return together. The demons are confident they will win and begin to teleport into the city. However, when they get inside, they find a red mist covering the area. The demon Ganis notices some students approaching, and he launches an attack with his flames, but as he gets closer, he finds something strange. As the witch Presaria and Lonnie the Beast Tamer explore the area, they talk about how they've both gotten stronger since following Zor. They suddenly notice a student running by, and Lonnie sends his wolves after him. 
They chase him into the mist, but after a while, Lonnie thinks something is wrong, and he calls his wolves back, and they end up bringing him something strange. As the Ogre King Mutarev explores, he wonders why he doesn't see any people. He suddenly gets attacked, and Mabel appears before him. She thinks he is working for the Merchants Association, but he has no idea what she is talking about. They start to fight, exchanging blows, and Mutarev is impressed with how Mabel can wield her axe so easily, considering her a worthy opponent. He blows her away, but Mabel throws her daggers which Mutarev blocks with his arm. However, Mabel activates her magic, which binds him with darkness, but Mutarev easily breaks free, because he has resistance to all magic. He charges at her, slamming down his club, but finds that she has strangely disappeared. Zor finds himself in a strange location, and Ganis arrives, pointing out that this was not their designated meeting point, but it seems they were strangely guided there, and their other members also arrive. They discuss their strange encounters they had, showing the talismans that they each found. Zor thinks there is something wrong, so he orders for their retreat. However, Seika suddenly appears, revealing that every person they saw was just one of his Shikigami, although he tells Mutarev that Mabel was real. Mutarev can see that Seika is strong, so he becomes excited to fight with him, but he instantly loses his head, as Seika cuts one of his talismans, saying that his resistance to curses was just too low. Zor becomes terrified, but Preseria charges at Seika, activating her third eye, trying to turn him to stone, but it doesn't work on him, and Seika summons one of his monsters, bringing out a gigantic snake. It has an inner third eye, that causes her heart to stop, and she drops to the ground. Lonnie's snake bursts out of the ground, but it's no match against Seika's. Lonnie tries to use his taming ability to befriend the snake. He calls out to it, but Zor tells him to run, but it's too late and the snake eats him. Seika finds it amusing he tried to tame it, but says it didn't work because it has a deep hatred for humans. Zor is in disbelief, regretting that they ever challenged Seika. Using his special eyes, he can see all of his abilities, and that Seika is the true demon king. He tells Ganis to escape with his teleportation while he holds Seika off. But Seika mentions how he is protecting Amu, and Zor is devastated to learn that the demon king has joined the side of the humans. Zor tells Ganis to spread the word to their allies, and he tries to stall for time. He charges up his attack, but Seika uses his magic and completely overwhelms him. When the dust clears, it seems Ganis managed to get away. Outside the city, Ganis stumbles away, and he can't believe Seika is the Demon King. He gets startled by a rabbit in a bush, but suddenly he gets stabbed in the chest, and he wonders how he got attacked. But we see it was another one of Seika's curses, and even Yuki is a little scared of his power. Mabel comes rushing over, asking about Mutarev, as she worries he could be attacking someone else, but Seika tells her not to worry, saying he has already handled it, and tells her to keep it a secret. Sometime later, the students are having another feast, and Seika wonders what he should say during his speech. He asks Amu how she felt when she had to give the speech, but she reminds him that her speech was interrupted by demons, but she would have talked about getting stronger together and becoming comrades with everyone. Seika gets ready for his speech, but there are suddenly knights that interrupt, looking for Amu. She identifies herself, and the knights tell her she is being charged with crimes against the Empire, saying that she slayed a demon emissary, but Amu is confused at what he is talking about, and the knights arrest her. Mabel prepares to fight back, but Seika tells her to stand down, saying that Amu is innocent, so they have nothing to worry about, and Amu is taken away. Seika meets with the principal, and they know that the Empire is trying to frame Amu. Seika finds it strange that the Empire is trying to get rid of the hero, and the principal says she is doing everything she can to help Amu, warning Seika not to do anything too rash, but Seika seems to have other plans, doubting her ability to save Amu. As Seika leaves the office, he tells Aoife and Mabel not to worry, because the principal is working to save her, and they should trust her. However, at night, Seika summons his dragon, who is still disobedient toward his new body. He forces it to recognize him, and Yuki appears, warning him not to go, and suggesting that he should give up on saving Amu. She thinks that if he uses his full power to solve the problem, the country may act against him, and he will end up dying just like he did in his previous life. But Seika doesn't care, saying he will destroy anyone in his way. Yuki notices he is enraged, thinking about his past, 
and she tells him to reconsider, but he tells her to know her place as his familiar, and he orders his dragon to head to the capital. Meanwhile, we see Alma locked up, thinking about her friends worrying for her, and hoping she will see Seika again, but she suddenly gets a visitor. Seika flies toward the capital, unleashing his talismans which transform, and help him look around to find Amu. He descends into the castle, and is not impressed with their security. However, he is noticed by a guard, who blows a whistle, and a number of archers take their position. They shoot at Seika, but he summons his magnetic cloud, which protects him from all the arrows. They keep shooting at him, so Seika drops two enormous boulders on them. As he continues forward, he comes across even more guards. They ask him what he wants, but he tells them to get out of the way, saying he will spare those who obey him. The guards shoot him with flaming arrows, and Seika is forced to dodge. He retaliates with his white inferno, which instantly devastates the guards. However, the guards keep shooting, and Seika summons one of his demons, which cuts up the guards in an instant. The guards all charge at him, but Seika burns them all with his flames. He eventually reaches Amu, destroying her cell, and telling her he is there to save her. Amu worries he will get in trouble for breaking her out, but Seika tells her her life is at stake. Amu thinks they will clear her name and she will be fine, telling him to go home, but Seika reveals to her she is the hero, so things aren't so simple. Amu is confused, and Seika explains that every few hundred years, the hero and devil king are reincarnated, and she is the current cycle's reincarnation of the hero, and the empire is intentionally trying to get rid of her. Seika suddenly notices someone approaching, and it turns out to be Gly. Seika suggests that he still owes Gly a duel, but Princess Fiona suddenly appears saying she just wants to talk. Seika can tell she has men outside, but she knows they would be no match for him. Seika asks why she is trying to kill Amu, when the devil should be her enemy. The princess explains that although the hero once saved the country against the devils, but in the current age, the empire and the devils both have armies, and neither sides want a war. So the concept of the hero and devil king are just relics of the past. Seika thinks if that is the case, there is still no need to kill Amu, but the princess explains that the hero's existence could be the ember that sparks a war, suggesting that even the demons were trying to take her out, not to gain an advantage, but to prevent the sparks of war. Seika wonders if he should just let Amu be sacrificed to preserve peace, but the princess swears she is trying to save Amu. She tells Seika to withdraw, saying he won't be held accountable for his actions, and promises to do everything within her power to save Amu. But Seika realizes that she manipulated them since they first met, so he doesn't trust her. The princess reminds him of his promise to obey her order for losing at chess, but Seika refuses to trust her. With no other choice, the princess guides them out of the palace, where she has a carriage prepared for them, recommending they head to the free city of Lakana. As they prepare to leave, Alma thanks the princess for her cloak, because she had visited when Alma was locked up. As they say farewell, Seika feels bad for not keeping his promise, so he decides to make up for it. He summons a number of doors, which unleash a tremendous number of talismans, creating a field that brings back everyone that he killed. The princess is shocked, saying this ruins her plans, because she had prepared a cover story about a monster attack, and Seika apologizes, saying he had good intentions. Seika and Amu leave the capital, and Seika thinks that Mabel and Aoife must be worried about them. Amu feels bad about having to drop out of the academy when they were so close to graduating, but they look forward to becoming adventurers. We see the princess sending a letter, which explains the situation to Mabel and Aoife. Seika and Amu eventually reach the free city. They see a commotion, and are surprised to find that Mabel and Aoife are already there, and they are overjoyed to be reunited. But that's where this video ends.